In the past 20,000 years, the human brain capacity has decreased by 10%. The population tolerant to lactose has significantly increased. The incidence of impacted wisdom teeth and the rate of missing wisdom teeth are rising. We might still be experiencing the aftermath of these evolutions. Recent discoveries, such as an additional blood vessel, an increase in the persistence rate of the median artery, an additional bone, an increase in the recurrence rate of the fabella bone, and a newly discovered tubular salivary gland, all suggest that human evolution is far from over. Today, we will explore this issue from the perspectives of genetic mutations and natural selection. Every division of a sperm during its formation can introduce mutations due to copying errors. The older the age, the more mutations. Nowadays, the reproductive age of men worldwide is generally delayed. As geneticist James Crow said, greatest mutational health hazard to the human genome is fertile older males. Therefore, for most men, freezing their sperm while young is a solution. But remember, it should be done in a professional medical institution with national qualifications requiring ultra-low temperatures of minus 196 degrees Celsius. Storing it in your home freezer won't work, and it might mix flavors. However, while genetic mutations increase, we must also consider natural selection. As humans enter the 21st century, significant advancements in productivity and medical levels have reduced the strict natural selection on us. Has human evolution stopped? No, because broader natural selection mechanisms have taken over. Today, Civilization has become a part of nature. Narrow natural selection mainly follows two rules. Rule 1, eliminate individuals carrying harmful genes. Rule 2, retain individuals with beneficial genes. But advancements in medical care have introduced a third rule, retain individuals even if they carry harmful genes. For instance, the widespread use of cesarean sections allows babies with larger head circumferences, who might not have survived before, to be born successfully. Today, the rate of cesarean sections is rapidly increasing worldwide, suggesting that in the future, more babies with larger heads will be born. While an increase in head circumference might be beneficial, medical interventions and natural selection mean that many individuals with harmful genes can reproduce, passing these genes down generations. Isn't this a form of human physical degeneration? Should we eliminate all harmful genes? Not necessarily. Evolution driven by genetic mutations is short-sighted only considering current environmental changes. For example, prokaryotes that adapted to extremely low oxygen environments 2 billion years ago couldn't have predicted the great oxygenation event. Dinosaurs, which adapted to the Mesozoic environment 65 million years ago, couldn't foresee the asteroid impact. When human genes lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C, they never anticipated Columbus's voyages. When a species enters a new environment and becomes highly adapted to it, it also becomes less adaptable to other environments. If the environment changes, the species might face extinction. This is the fundamental reason for the constant birth and extinction of species. Harmful genes of a species in the past might become beneficial in a drastically changed future environment. Genetic diversity is a species backup plan against environmental changes. For instance, the gene causing sickle cell anemia is harmful, but in some African countries, its prevalence is much higher than in other regions because it offers resistance against deadly malaria. Many scientists have made predictions about the future evolution of humans. For example, future humans might have fingers 50% longer than today, smaller palms and feet, larger heads and eyes. Due to the instability of the male Y chromosome, men might disappear in 120,000 years, with females reproducing using two eggs. But these long-term evolutionary ideas might not come to fruition with the rapid advancements in genetic technology. The rapid progress in plant and animal genetic modification has made humans eager to modify themselves. For centuries, the pace of human civilization's development has far exceeded the pace of human physical evolution. Today, in essence, you live in a 21st century world with a body that's 10,000 years old. In the demands of the 21st century society, what kind of humans have the greatest competitive advantage? Those with strong self-discipline, the ability to resist temptations, and the capability for prolonged focus and learning. But our ancient bodies are easily distracted, struggle with delayed gratification, are addicted to alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, and other addictive substances. We overeat high-calorie foods, overindulge in explicit content, avoid physical labor, yet suffer from back and neck problems. Despite regular dental care, 
wisdom teeth can be painful. Men struggle with their sexual urges and worry about their performance. While women face workplace discrimination after childbirth due to the need for maternity leave. All these issues are like running a high-end game on a low-end computer, resulting in painful lags. Today, from a genetic technology perspective, we can already determine a baby's gender, skin color, eye color, and hair color. The first baby genetically screened to be free from hereditary breast cancer was born in London in 2009. In the future, we might even decide a baby's appearance, height, physical ability, and intelligence. This is a terrifying prospect because genetic modification costs money. Today, wealthy people's children might not necessarily be outstanding, but in the future, they will certainly be more attractive, faster, and smarter. Some countries are gradually relaxing legal regulations in this area. In 2016, the UK approved the world's first human embryo editing research. While this has faced opposition today, who knows what future humans will think. Before the birth of the first test tube baby 40 years ago, many saw it as a monstrous idea. Today, there are over 5 million test tube babies worldwide. Will the most powerful interest groups in the future be genetic modification companies? Will they lobby governments? As genetic modification technology becomes more commercialized and widespread, costs will decrease. When the cost of genetically modifying citizens to be healthier drops below government health care expenditures, will governments facing financial pressures encourage or even mandate state-funded genetic modifications? Although the portion of genetic modification fees used for medical purposes might decrease or even be covered by public funds, genetic modification companies will undoubtedly develop safer, more potent, and more expensive projects to enhance human abilities. CRISPR technology is currently the most popular gene editing tool worldwide. Thousands of labs globally have mastered this technology, and the only thing holding back these Pandora's boxes is the law. The scenarios described above might be the world in a few decades or centuries. If we dare to imagine the world in a thousand years, the human brain, composed of about 86 billion neurons with nearly a quadrillion connections, can be likened to a CPU with 86 billion transistors and a quadrillion nodes. Theoretically, if we could precisely capture the activity on these nodes and transistors, we could interpret what the brain is thinking and doing at any moment. We could also input electrical signals directly into the brain, change its working state, and even connect the brain to computers or other brains. Once this is achieved, the pace of human civilization's evolution will skyrocket allowing humans to inhabit virtual digital worlds. This makes it apparent that our generation stands at a watershed in species evolution. From 200. 000 years ago to today, Homo sapiens primarily evolved through narrow natural selection. But why should we adapt to nature instead of making nature adapt to us? Why should we be subject to natural selection instead of choosing for ourselves? It seems humans are ready to take over the reins of natural evolution, eager to become the first species on this planet to determine its own evolution. However, all these imaginations are based on the optimistic assumption that humans have completely escaped narrow natural selection. Have humans truly conquered nature? What gives humans this confidence? The Industrial Revolution? In the 200 years since the Industrial Revolution, there hasn't been a large-scale natural disaster leading to human extinction. Does that mean it will never happen in the future? When you, as a species with a 200,000-year history, pass by a horseshoe crab in an aquarium, a creature with a 400-million-year evolutionary history, and chat about species evolution and humanity's achievements in the past 200 years, it might just swim away, thinking you're naive. 